Wedding should be a fun and a memorable event, but sometimes during the planning process, when you start calculating all the expenses, it can suck the fun out of it. Now, while I can't promise you that I can get you down to zero expenses, I do have some strategies that I think can help you save money when planning your wedding. So whether you're planning a wedding for yourself or for someone else, grab yourself some snacks and get ready for some money saving tips. The first tip is creating a realistic budget. So everything in the finance world starts with the B word. And yes, I'm talking about budgeting. Now, the first thing that you have to do and the goal of budgeting is to find out how much disposable income that you have. Now, disposable income is how much money that you have after you've paid all of your primary expenses. Do you have $500 after you've paid your light bills and your car bill and your insurance and everything else? Maybe you have $2,000 left over. The goal is to see how much of that disposable income can go towards your wedding expenses. The next thing you want to look at, speaking of expenses, is where you can cut costs when it comes to your primary expenses. So maybe you can switch over for a cheaper phone plan, or maybe there are some ways that you can reduce your light bill. The point is to evaluate all your current expenses and see where you can save money. Why? Those extra few dollars can go towards your amazing wedding that you're planning. The next step may be fun for some, depending on what you like, um, but here's where you can now start creating your wedding budget. So you can use a spreadsheet. There are lots of templates online that you can use as well to help you list out all of your wedding expenses. Now, I must say here, when you're getting married, you have so much pressure from everywhere, from the wedding blogs, from TikTok, Instagram, your in-laws, your best friend who got married last year, telling you all the things that you must have at your wedding. But I wanna remind you that it is your wedding and you get to personalize it in the way that you want. So for example, you might decide that you just wanna go down to the courthouse and get married, um, and that you wanna go afterwards to your favorite restaurant to eat versus having a big reception. This is where you can really evaluate and cut costs and cut out the things that are not important to you. A way to assess the kind of expenses that you want to have at your wedding is to think about what your values are. What's most important to you? What is the thing that you value the most and that you must have at your wedding? I personally would focus on those things and maybe cut out the other traditional things that aren't so important to you. So once you've done your wedding budget, what you should have by the end of that is an estimate of how much your wedding is going to cost you. In order to figure out how much you need to save before your wedding, you take that number, which is the number you got after doing your wedding budget, and you divide it by the number of months that you have until your wedding. So for example, if you found that you're gonna need $10,000 to pay for your dream wedding, and you're getting married within 10 months, then you need about $1,000 a month in order to cover all the expenses for your wedding. Now, for those of you panicking saying, oh my God, I don't know how I'm gonna afford that within such a short time frame." I want to remind you that there is no pressure to get married within a certain time frame. Now, I do understand some people have certain beliefs um, or reasons why they need to hurry up and get married. But if you don't have anything that's tying you to a certain time frame, there's no shame in pushing your wedding back until you can afford it. Another final tip is that you don't have to pay or rather save all of that money in one lump sum. You can pay vendors as you go along. For example, the first month you can pay the flower people and then you can pay for the venue and so on and so forth. Tip number two, find cost effective ways to pay for your wedding. Now, if you're thinking about taking out a loan for your wedding, I want you to rethink it for one reason. As many people know, loans tend to have interest, which means you have to pay for borrowing money. So if you take out a loan to fund your wedding, then it means that once you're done getting married, you actually have to end up paying back more for the wedding than what you initially paid. So I'm going to get into some cost saving strategies that can help you make paying for your wedding easier. So the first tip for funding your wedding is a little obvious, but I'm still going to say it anyway, and it's tapping into your savings. So if you are a super saver and you have an emergency fund plus some surplus sitting around in an account, then this might be a good time to tap into that and see how much of it you can put towards your wedding. Now, I must say it is still recommended that you have three to six months worth of savings in your emergency fund. So if you are going to pull from that, don't forget to replenish it after you're done with all the wedding festivities. Another tip is to pick up a side hustle. And this can especially be helpful for people who don't have much savings or don't have anything to tap into. We have some amazing articles as well as an incredible YouTube video on side hustles here at NerdWallet that you can watch, that you can read to get more ideas and insight into side hustles that you can do. Another tip is to ask family members to contribute. 
Now hold up for those who are like, no, I don't want to ask anybody. I'm independent or I don't want to bother anyone to pay for my wedding. It can be a good cost saving strategy. And I also want to remind you that it's not uncommon for family to chip in when it comes to paying for a wedding. Funny enough, I was watching How to Get Rich on Netflix the other day, and there was a couple on there who were getting married. And of course, they were looking at how to make the wedding cheaper. And what was suggested to that couple was asking their parents. And guess what? After they asked their parents, their parents were over the moon to help them pay for the wedding. Okay, maybe that's an overstatement, but they were happy to help them pay is the point, And they ended up saving a lot of money long term. And likewise, when I got married, my amazing parents contributed to my wedding and it saved me a lot of money, especially considering that I was just starting out on my financial journey. And honestly, I didn't have much savings to pay for it. The last tip that I have in terms of funding your wedding, if none of the above tips are accessible to you, is using a 0% APR credit card. For those who don't know what that is, it's essentially a credit card that gives you a promotional period where you don't have to pay any interest back. So in other words, you get a loan that you don't have to pay any interest on, which in many ways can be gold. Number three, find an affordable date and venue. Now, this might be another obvious tip, but I'm gonna tell you anyway, because I think it might be helpful. So if you can, try getting married during the week instead of on the weekend. As you can imagine, most people probably wanna get married on the weekend, and what does that mean for venue prices? They're higher during the weekend. Another tip is to check for hidden fees before you book a venue. You can ask the person who's renting out the venue to give you a breakdown of all the fees, make sure you look through them and see any ones that you think you can negotiate. So that might be, you know, uh, event insurance or catering fees or entertainment fees or any other fees on there that look like they're negotiable. The next tip is to choose a non-traditional venue. And when I say that, what do I mean? Traditional venues are usually like in church or a fancy event hall. And those things can be amazing. However, they're not always the cheapest options. So non-traditional venues could be your best friend's backyard. It could be a beach or a park or a university, an Airbnb, and the list goes on. I quite particularly like the latter ones in terms of public spaces because sometimes they tend to be cheaper than private spaces. So for example, the University of California Berkeley's Botanical Garden offers wedding packages for $1,600. Now, if you compare that to a private space that could charge, I don't know, eight to $10,000, I would definitely say that that is a deal. Tip number four, buy wedding attire at unconventional shops. Some examples include a department store or bridal stores, um, bridal consignment shops, Etsy. Yes, I said Etsy. They sell more than arts and crafts. And Facebook Marketplace is also a hidden gem where you can get a wedding dress. Now, hear me out before you start saying who wants to buy their wedding dress or tux or whatever on Facebook. You can actually find new things on there as well as very I don't want to say well priced because everyone's budget is different, but you can find relatively affordable wedding dresses on there. I've seen some brand new dresses on Facebook Marketplace for $400, which I think is pretty decent. Tip five, get creative with your decor. Again, I don't know about you, but speaking for myself, I was shocked by how expensive things like flowers and wedding decor was when I was planning my wedding. So I'm going to give you some cost saving tips on saving money on both. Let's start with flowers. So one tip is to choose in-season blooms. Um, what do I mean by this? If you're getting married in fall, then yellow sunflowers may be a good pick versus trying to get lilies, which tend to be in-season during the springtime. Another tip for all my TikTok lovers, even if you're not a TikTok lover, if this still applies to you, is to check TikTok for inspirational ideas about how you can use everyday affordable things and repurpose them into wedding decor. This is a way for you to save money versus, you know, either hiring a wedding decorator if that's what you had in mind, or you could even work with your wedding decorator to use cheaper materials to bring down the overall price. Uh, another idea, I don't think you should sleep on the dollar store um, and arts and craft shops because those are places that you can buy your wedding decorations as well. So as an example, I went on the dollar store just poking around to see how much they charge for centerpieces. And there was this relatively cute centerpiece that I saw for $1.25. But when I went on the Books Wedding website, if you've ever visited their website before, 
one centerpiece was $90. So that is a huge price difference and you could save a lot of money overall if you, you know, mix and match or go to kind of cheaper stores to get some of your wedding decorations. Tip number six, which is my final tip, I have some photographer and videographer tips. For the media element of your wedding, this can cost you thousands of dollars as well, especially if you're looking for a photographer or a videographer who is in high demand and pretty popular. Some ways that you can save money in that way is one, to hire someone who is up and coming. So that could be an intern, a recent college graduate who studied photography, or someone who's just building out their clientele and just starting up. Now, before you say, I don't want somebody who doesn't have that much experience taking pictures at my wedding, um, you never know. They could be just as good as someone who is up and coming, but everyone starts from somewhere and needs a chance. Of course, you gotta do your due diligence first, and that means checking their work, you know, if they have any references, asking for references, and also making sure they're professional and you have a good rapport with them. Another tip is to hire a photographer for certain parts of your wedding versus for the entire day. So you might say, hey, I only really need pictures of a ceremony when I'm exchanging romantic moments with my significant other. Or on the other hand, you might say, you know, I want the whole reception recorded because I want to see everyone getting down and I want those memories. Whichever the case is, just choose a couple of hours that are most important to you and you can hire them for those hours to save some money. Implementing the strategies that I mentioned in this video probably isn't something that you're going to achieve in a day, but the time that you spend can be worthwhile because the money that you could potentially save in the long term can be super helpful to you, especially as a new couple. It could also help you start your new life with your partner on a financial high, which is something I think every couple deserves. Hi, my name is Elizabeth and I am a personal finance writer here at Nerdwater. If you need help getting started, we have articles on how to save money during the wedding planning phase, in addition to a wedding budget calculator that I think you might find really helpful. If you liked today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe.